Now, education is one of what I call the holy trinity. Right? The, holy, the other two being healthcare and the environment. These are kinds of, or these, these are goods where virtually everyone agrees that we should have more, and virtually everyone agrees that we should have better. Right? So a politician who values his job does not go in front of a national audience and say, we are spending too much money on education. Enough is enough. Good enough. It's fine the way it is. Right? A few years ago, there was, an art, there was a headline in The Onion to the effect of President Bush says, uh, you know, says that we should discontinue low-yield, high-risk investment in nation's youth. <laughs> and it's a tie, it, it is a, yes, in case you don't know, The Onion is a humor newspaper, right? If you have not heard of The Onion, it's very, it's very funny, uh, at least to many of us. So, uh, and this headline was so absurd to most people that you could just put it there, and I was reading and saying, well, maybe it is low-yield, high-risk investment, and so maybe we should do less of it. Okay. Now, uh, education is also a rare example of a kind of spending where both economists and the public generally agree that we're not investing enough. Right? So in my last lecture, I'm going to talk about all the ways that economists and the public disagree, and they are very many and very inconsistent. Education is one of the very weird cases where economists and the public do agree, where economists and the public do see eye to eye, where not only does the public think that we need to be doing more, but economists will say, yes, that's actually right. Uh, the broken clock is right twice a day, and education is one of those times that, uh, that the public actually has it right. right now, when you go into the uh, economics of education literature, what you'll see is that economists ed estimate something called the rate of return to education. Uh, so I presume that everyone here, before you went to college, you went to an Excel spreadsheet, and then you, calculate, you put down a bunch of numbers about how much money you can make with college, without college, and what the cost of tuition was, and how much money you could be earning in and out of school. And then you went through the numbers and tried many different alternative scenarios. And finally, after weeks of deliberation and studying the numbers, you decided that you would go to college, or, or maybe decided that you would not, right? Uh, no, actually, most people do not do this, but economists who study education have done this for you. Right? Economists who study education have done this for you, or at least they've done it for the average person. And the usual conclusion that they get is that education actually pays extremely well. Right? Education actually pays extremely well, particularly if your parents are paying the tuition. Right? <laughs> right? If you're paying your own tuition, then it's a little bit harder. Uh, you know, the, the best deal might be if you get the, your parents to give you the money that they would have spent on tuition, and then you can invest it in some other asset. Right? Anyone's parents willing to do that for you? Right? Yeah. That requires a high level of trust. Right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, when economists study the return to education and try to estimate what kind of, you know, like, like how, how, well, how well this investment actually pays, it's quite common to get an estimate of something like getting maybe a, you know, ten, a 8 or 10% rate return. If you go and do some adjustments, maybe that'll get down to 5 or 6%. But still, uh, this is not bad at all. Right? Certainly, you know, that's a lot better than the stock market has done, has re and done in recent years, uh, for example. Okay? So, so the standard return to est education estimates are at least pretty high. And these estimates do not actually count another, <clears throat> another effect that economists consider important for education, which is the positive externalities. So many economists will say, well, you know, we are all better off if people in general have more education, and yet when we estimate the return to education, we're just looking at how much it is, in, it is in it for the individual. So many economists will then say, so actually the benefits of education are even larger than they seem. Not only does it pay the individual amply to get uh, more education, but also, society is better off if more people go because there's so many people other than the student himself who gets a payoff from it. Okay, standard story. Okay, so this is a standard story, and many people study education their entire lives without ever going past it. 